Okay guys, I just released a song called Shine featuring Rachel J. And today I'm going to be explaining how I made it. So first things first, the song starts off with this vibraphone melody. That's just the intro to the song. It's actually a reference to two other songs, but I'm not gonna get into that now because I'm gonna try to do this as fast as possible. So the second thing that we get to is the intro. Those are the chords there. These chords are being performed on my MX-61, um, which about 80% of the song was made with, including the drums. Um, I, I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna put up a graphic every time I use the MX61. Just know that all of this is the MX61. It's it's a pretty good keyboard. Anywho, moving right along, we've got a bass. Now this bass is made with my micro chord. This is one of the few sounds in this song that doesn't use the Yamaha MX61. This is my micro chord. So moving on. So we start to go into the first verse, but I have a little intro piece going into it that uses a harp. It's just this. I just put it in with MIDI. And this is a built-in sound in FL Studio. It's called Sakura, the Sakura synth. It's a built-in like pluck synthesizer. And so I just picked out these MIDI notes with a mouse. Now let's talk about vocals. We have five layers all together. Let's do them in reverse. The first layer is this. It's an octave up, you know, I'm doing a falsetto. And then the layer right after that is the same thing, just doubled. And then right above that, we have a lower octave, another lower octave, and then finally the loudest of the lower octaves. And the verse just kind of goes on like that. I think you're somebody I want to know. Now up here, I'm adding these little atmospheric piano chords that sound like this. Putting a bunch of reverb on them, that's it. But those go underneath my vocals to add a little bit of extra spice. You say you're sure we haven't met before. But now we're at the hook. What's happening in the hook? We have a chord progression change. Now our chords are these. Then we have our bass, which again is performed with the micro chord. The vocals have six layers. The first three layers are actually the same exact octave, they're just panned slightly differently, like so. Layer one. Is it true? Layer two. Is it true? Layer three. Is it true? Come a dime a dozen cause I've met a few. The next two layers are actually an octave of the first three. Come a dime a dozen cause I've met a few. And the final sixth layer is a harmony of the first three. Come a dime a dozen cause I've met a few. And all together we have. Come a dime a dozen cause I've met a few. And it goes on like that. Let's talk about the second verse. So what actually changes for the second verse? We have Rachel J's vocals coming on top of my Hey Hi Hello tag here. Hey Hi Hello. We've got them way down here at the bottom. You can see uh, Rachel's vocals down here. Hey Hi Hello. Super reverb, super lush, and they're just on top of mine up here. Hey Hi Hello. And that's what starts the second verse. But for the most part, the first verse and the second verse are kind of identical. There's that little addition of the Rachel J vocals underneath mine, but since there's no other real changes between the two verses, I'm just gonna move on to the bridge and talk about that. Welcome to the bridge. I'm gonna be talking about the music of the bridge and not so much the vocals because the vocals are by Rachel J and we'll get to that soon. So what's the first thing that I do in the bridge? I first strip everything back to the original chords that are in the, the first verse. No bass, very little sparse drums, just those chords. However, I add these little mini notes right here. This is 3X Osc. It is the most basic and free synth that comes with FL Studio. Here how like kind of bouncy it is. 
And so that's being layered underneath our, our chords that we've already recorded. Then we add a little glockenspiel here. That's an interplay with Rachel J's vocal melody. Now it feels so perfectly a storybook ending. Now the pre-chorus is where things get a little bit interesting. So we start playing those same chords that we had from the first hook. However, we have some flutes that come in and around it, as well as some synthesizers. So let's listen to that really quickly. So let's talk about what those are. These are your flutes down here, and this is what they sound like without the piano. Just a little flutter that's only put there to enhance Rachel J's vocals. And it's not the only thing that I put underneath it. I also have the piano going, and I have a marching band snare going underneath that as well. The next thing we have is a little string arrangement come up. So we have a double bass paired with two violins. And then we go into our final hook, and this has got the vocals on it. This is my vocals and Rachel J's vocals combined. Okay, I just want to take a second to say that in the interest of time, I have skipped over some of the smaller details that I've added to this track. However, I'm now embarking on the second half of this track, which is kind of a nightmare to put it lightly. There's a lot going on, so I'm going to try to speed through it as much as possible, and I just want to apologize for anybody watching this um, if it seems rapid or nonsensical, but I'm going to really try to get through this. The first thing you'll hear is these chords that come in. Now those were performed on my Roland Gaia. Um, I even saved in here, if you can see the text, how small it is, I even saved in here the, the name of the patch I use, 5G. So this is on the Roland Gaia patch number 5G. That is what we start with, getting into the second half of this track. Again, the drums are from my MX-61. Here we already have some brass coming in. What is this brass? These are sustained trumpets. These are sustained trumpets. Again, I'll play that, and you can even see the MIDI here. Just a simple movement, but it's there to enhance. Moving on. Now, what is that that just happened? Those notes become very important in the second half of this song. Here are those notes being performed on a wood flute, which is actually from my Yamaha MX-61, again. And here are those same notes being performed on a glockenspiel. And here are those same notes being performed on a sweet flute, which is also from my MX-61. And combining all those together on top of the chords that we've already established, it sounds like this. The next thing that we add is a flamenco guitar. Of course, it's not real. It's made of MIDI, and it looks like this. While that's going, we also have a little synth ditty here. And those things combined sound like this. There's that brass again. The only difference now is we're adding some staccato notes at the very end of it. Sounds like this. All that together. And I'm not going to spend most of this video talking about drums because, as you can see, I have a lot of them going on at the same time. But there is a section here that kind of accents those, those brass hits. And so all that together. 
Now here's where things get a little bit more interesting. We add some of those operatic voices, the like really cheesy ones, the those. I love how abruptly they cut off too. Now you might recognize those same notes because I used them for the brass up here. And so you put those two together and then you put it over the track. There are those notes that I said that were gonna be really important later on. Here's the different things that they're being played with this time. They're being played with my flamenco guitar. They're being played with the wood flute again. They're being played with the glockenspiel again. They're being played with a sweet flute again. And they're even being performed by Rachel J's voice down here. So combine that all together. Here's the part where it breaks down to a full on flute solo. So what am I using to play this flute solo? It's just my MX-61. And that's being played over this piano progression that's really just playing the same two chords over and over. And then, just for extra spice, we add an upright bass. The reason that I chose an upright bass is because I wanted this part of the song to feel a little bit more laid back while still having that energy. What else did I add here? I added some staccato strings. The staccato strings have these chords, so you can hear them. And then it's really just a bunch of percussion over the top of it. Now there's those notes again, very important notes. They're being repeated so much in this second half of the song, but right here they're being repeated with so many layers. So let's actually break down each individual layer that's happening. The first layer is actually a synthesizer. The second layer is again the wood flute. The third layer is glockenspiel. And then we have the vocal stack by Rachel J. And then we have my own vocal stack, which is pretty big, so I'm gonna break it down super fast. We have the first layer, the second layer, which is the same. Then we have the third layer, which is the same, but panned. And then we start to add harmonies with this one. And then the final one is another harmony. Now you may notice I'm not hitting the right notes on some of these, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely not in tune. You can even hear how it's a little pitchy at certain notes. But this song was super inspired by that really earthy Latin bossa nova jazz sound, in which case you have a lot of singers, you know, up there and there's not a lot of auto tune going on. I wanted a more organic sound, you know. I can have definitely a stack of vocals that are auto tuned, which I have several of on this album, but I really wanted to have a more organic approach to these ones. And so that's why they're a little bit more loose. And I feel like when I combine them, they're kind of, you know, greater than the sum of their parts, if that makes sense. <laughs> And then underneath everything, we have these big trumpet sustained notes. And those notes are really just meant to give some grounding to this flute solo that's kind of going wild. And you've got your piano under it, giving it a little bit more stability also. And then you have this layer with the Roland Gaia that's going on top of the piano with more of that like game show sound. And 
And then we bring back those sweet staccato strings. But I didn't make this song all by myself, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring on the lyricist and vocalist and vocal producer, Rachel J. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, I, I go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm Rachel J. Or Rachel J. Or Rachel. Or R J. Or whatever. You can call me whatever. Um, but my pronouns are they them. That's all that matters. Uh, <laughs> Sick. Okay, I'm probably um, I'm gonna singer, start using R J. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. RJ, I really <laughs> like RJ. I usually give RJ at like restaurants or something. Word. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, but we know so many RJs too, so that, I don't know. <laughs> you know. Oh crap! You're right. Bokeh. You know RJ. Bokeh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. So okay, um, okay. But yeah. Okay, yeah. And for everybody, for anybody watching, um, um, I have known Rachel for a pretty long time. Uh, about six years like pretty soon after i moved here i like moved here and started going to shows mm -hmm. and playing shows and R rachel was just kind of always around and i didn't always like there. a lot of people were yeah like a lot of people were around <laughs> but people were doing a bunch of different things like everybody that was around wasn't necessarily a musician um mm -hmm. and i didn't know that you had like interest in even making music and now it's like you have a bunch of songs actually out you have like a bunch of collaborations <laughs> that you've made with people and so it's cool to have seen that trajectory, but um, just kind of walk me through that a little bit, like the abridged version of like how you went from just like attending shows to being a musician performer. Yeah, so uh, I started going to shows in high school just cause like high school was really rough for me. So I was like getting away from that. And so I would go to LA and go to shows and stuff. And um, I got into like the Twitter scene, like the Twitter community. And I just followed a bunch of like the musicians that I really liked. Yeah. Twitter was so different back then. <laughs> it was so different. It was so different. Gosh, I miss it. But yeah. anyways, <laughs> yeah, I would go to shows and stuff. And while I was at those shows, I would take so many videos and pictures and I would like put them all oh, on Twitter and yeah. tag people like constantly. I would just tag all the people that I was like watching the shows or like people that I would meet in the crowd and stuff like I posted so many photos and videos, and I honestly still do, but it's just not as excessive. That was a really important um, thing. Like for anybody that doesn't realize that, or maybe you weren't like active or going to events back then, like now I feel like a lot of people are that person. Like everybody mm -hmm, kind of mm -hmm. does that. We kind of have a documentary right. mindset when we approach things. But back then that was pretty rare. And you were one of the few yeah. people that would do that. So much so to like, and, I would hang out with my friends and if you weren't there, <laughs> There was no proof it had and happened. No but, yeah, we were like, oh, did they, like, do we have any photos of them? We're like going through our gallery and we're like, wow, no one took a photo. Dang, Rachel wasn't yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, it was such a thing. But yeah, that was huge um, for artists to have like videos of themselves performing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. That was big. Right. And the the scene that we were in was such an underground. It was such a small scene. You know, it wasn't like the musicians that I was going to go watch were like big and famous it was like micro like niche micro celebrities on soundcloud you know yeah. like it was like you like omni boy uh sean wasabi t doyle like yeah. you know those like those are like the big three <laughs> <laughs> and then um my first show like electronic music show was actually giraffage oh and, wow yeah and so i was like this is weird i like it it's like really repetitive but like makes me want to dance it was really cool to just like kind of get into electronic music from like having just been into like pop music before that um, okay. and like meeting these people that were like so outcasted from like normal society as well you know like it was so like queer and like just inclusive and nobody was there to judge each other we were just there to listen to music and dance yeah. you know and Everybody that was, was so just, weird. <laughs> it was so beautiful, though. Like, yeah. it, it felt so good. It felt so good to, like, feel included and, like, accepted just for, like, who you are. Like, you don't have to change anything. You're just making music and everyone, like, loves you. And that really honestly brings me to Jack L.A. Uh, I, like, I feel like that's such a pivotal part of um, 
my music career and like just oh, music in yeah. general. Yeah, like that night was when I really got close to and like met a lot of the musicians that I look up to. I mean, I think that was like honestly when I became friends with you too, like the brownies and lemonade before that night too, like Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot of relationships built. That's it's really funny, yeah, that you bring that up. There's a lot of relationships built on and hinged on that night. Mm -hmm, exactly. And I think that night was like just really what integrated me into the community. And I'm like forever grateful for Simon for yeah. meeting that, you know, for doing that for us. That was so cool. And like, and, and it was cool. Like everybody was hanging out. There wasn't really a lot of egos just because none of us were doing anything like super important on the grand scheme of the music industry. So yeah. it was just like really cool. Everybody was kind of like in this equal playing field, which was nice. Right. And so there was a lot of encouragement for other people to like, hey, like come in, you can be a part of this mm -hmm. or like you can play mm -hmm. and like telling people that they could like make things too. It was really mm -hmm. nice. So I, I bought like a cheap little mic one year uh, during some Black Friday deal, you know, some like cheap little Sony mic. Um, and I, I didn't have the confidence back then to like um, write for people and like sing and like post all that, you know? So I was like, I can, something I can do is beat tags. Wait, so, wait, um, wait. Because some people are gonna watch this and they're gonna be like, what is a beat tag? So just explain. Right, right, okay. So, um, dang, what is like one that everyone, oh, DJ Khaled. Okay, so DJ Khaled has his annoying ass thing where he goes, <laughs> <laughs> another one. Another one. Or DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled. Yeah, yeah, okay. But I would record it for other artists, so I would be like, Omni Boy, you know? And then Omni would like stick that in his song. And yeah. it's just kind of like a, it's like a signature, an artist's signature that like, I made this song, here's my signature on it, you know? So I was charging like, then me ten dollars, and I will send you like a Google link of of me <laughs> <laughs> saying your B tag like five times. You know, <laughs> That's so wild. <laughs> so I did that, and um, while I was doing that, uh, Sean had actually reached out to me, and he was like, "Hey, I'm actually making this song called Otter Pop," and he was like, "Can you sing this one little line?" And uh, I just want to see how it sounds. And I did that and I sent it to him and he actually ended up sticking it into the song and using it in the song. And he was like, hey, I actually really like this and I like your voice. And so he was like, you wanna try writing? And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I do wanna try writing. And so he brought me in for a session with um, him and Hollis. And it was really daunting at first because you know, I've only ever sang in like the comfort of my own room or like, you know, right. like I've never tried writing and stuff. And I was like, oh, what if I sound stupid or. And these are two people oh. that like write a lot. Like, yeah, Sean they're Hollis. like professional musicians, yeah. you know, I was like, <laughs> oh, man, you know, just Sean and Hollis being the people that they are. They were really warm and welcoming and like just they, they just guided me through the whole process. And we like did a lot more sessions after that. And um that's kind of brought me to where I am now with like getting those opportunities through Sean. Like I'm so, so grateful to Sean. Shouts out to you, Sean, if you're watching this. Like <laughs> you, I would not have gotten to where I am without you. So thank you. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, do you still, by the way, do you still have that mic? I do, yeah, it's. You can't get rid of that today. mic. I can bring it over today. No. So. <laughs> Yeah, like you can't get rid of that now. And that's like, I, I'm, I'm that way with like early, like I have like my first keyboard and it, even though I yeah. never use it anymore, I'm like, oh, I can't get rid of that. That's like the only reason I do this. Like, yeah. Oh, man. That's my so baby, cool though. My first born child. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's, it's what it feels like. <laughs> yeah. And so like you had this kind of like mentorship through, through Sean and Hollis and now you have your own writing process, you know, because you're not, there's nobody looking over your shoulder now at the time when right. you're writing things. And so what is the like Rachel J writing process of like somebody has sent you a track and you're like, okay, I need to make vocals or lyrics for them. Yeah, so when I'm in the studio and stuff, I have a lot of more rules to adhere to when I'm writing and stuff. And I feel like it's a lot more um, like stressful a little bit. And so okay. I feel like the best writing sessions I have are by myself, like in the shower or driving somewhere in my car. So I'll literally oh. just like, play the instrumental on like repeat and loop it. And I'll just like, kind of just play around with stuff um, like in my shower and stuff. And then, you know, like 
dry my hands off and go to my recording app and and record something like a little a little melody yeah. or something if I like come up with something really cool but um yeah I feel like my process is really scattered I don't have like a step by step it's just kind of like it just comes to me it like hits me in some moments and I'm like well well there's a whole song like it's either I write the whole <laughs> song or like I cannot write it at all like it, it, there's no in between. <laughs> I've wondered that just because you definitely have a style. Like uh, even the people that don't feel like uh, myself included, that don't feel like they necessarily have a style. Sometimes you have to be like outside of yourself. You know, you, from like a you need like a second opinion, a, a third party mm -hmm. to come up and go like, mm -hmm. oh no, there's a consistency among this, and there's right. definitely a consistency among your your vocal performances and even in your lyricism. And so when I wrote because I've sent you uh, I've sent you a track before this one that was like super jazzy and it was like mm -hmm. it didn't mesh as well yeah and, and yeah it's like this isn't it and so I was like okay 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 that's fine and I kept working on more music and more music until I found one that I was like well this could work like this this yeah, feels yeah, a little yeah. bit more in in that lane it did work out and I when I listen back to the vocals that you put on it and the lyrics that you put on it I'm like there is like I can see the the shine that you have as an artist whereas when I because I also have <laughs> yeah I also have <laughs> vocals on the track and when I listen to my vocals there's specifically in my vocals there is a a melody hey hi hello da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. like I had my own vocal melody there mm -hmm. which is like very jazzy in its approach and you didn't just come in and go like well here's my vocal melody like here's like my approach to it you actually took and like reappropriated that mm -hmm. same melody it's very different but it starts mm -hmm. with those same notes like da 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 hey how's it going you look like a dreamer what do you find you're drawn to I feel like um, because all of my experience in writing is in the pop industry, that is definitely where I like go towards, you know, where I'm yeah. like, I want it to sound catchy and like, you know, I definitely go towards like the um, more like the major keys, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. Um, yeah, so it's like a brighter sound usually, um, but um, I actually want to like learn to kind of um, write differently, if that makes sense, because mm -hmm. uh, all of the experience that I have is working for somebody else's project, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so as I'm like kind of figuring out myself as an artist and making stuff like for myself, I'm like, how can I write a little bit differently to showcase, you know, my my own style or, you know, to kind of like put a little bit of my jazz into it. Um, yeah. Make it a little bit me. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot. A funny thing is a lot of people when they meet me or um, hear my music is like, that's so funny that you make music like that because I look at your Instagram and I would have never <laughs> guessed that you sound like that. <laughs> it's like all black everything. So dystopian and like doom, 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 and my music's like yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting though because I, I I've run into that same problem or not problem but that same situation or dilemma where it's mm -hmm. like I my music or at least it used to there was a time where it was just like all like bubble gum and rainbows and it was like all like yeah and I, that was like my thing and then people would like have a conversation with me and they're like man you're depressing as heck like what the heck why are you making music like that. And then I would open my mouth to like, I would open my mouth to like record lyrics and all of the words were always sad. It's really hard for me to like, oh, it's hard for me to access like fun lyrics. Cause whenever yeah. I have to talk, I'll speak from like my experiences. And it's not that I've never had a bad or a good experience, but like <laughs> it just tends to always manifest as like really sad lyrics. And so like, how do you even have access to those like really sweet lyrics? Um, honestly, I think it, I, I owe that a lot to Sean and Hollis because they oh. are so bubbly when they write. Like I would come up with some like sad ass lyrics or something <laughs> like that. And they'd be like, no, no, we're going to actually sing about Haikyuu <laughs> and matcha. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. My bad. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> it's definitely um, an art form. Yeah, it definitely is. But I actually have a couple songs with Sean that are like, we would get into the studio and I'm like, guys, can we please not write about foods today? Please, please. <laughs> I mean, I bet 
because in, in the same way that like somebody would listen to like a sad art like or an artist that makes a bunch of sad music or sad art and go like oh they must be a really upsetting person it's almost like yeah. when you meet like a a metal like somebody who's like screaming and stuff like that and, like a yeah, metal band yeah. and they're like super uplifting they're, and like really fun and goofy and, like, <laughs> yeah it's like people aren't super like two-dimensional it's like they can be uh -huh. more varied but I think that even being able to access that really sweet and lighthearted, because people want to feel that when they listen to songs. Mm -hmm. People don't always right. want to listen to music and like hate life. And so mm -hmm. it's nice that you're able, that you have that, just like that bag on you. Because even in right. this song, I'm like trying to write a song that's like not the worst, you know, like somewhat positive. And it took me months to come up with like, <laughs> with just that. And you came in in way less time, by the way, and just had this like bag of like, here, 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 and are throwing down all of these like metaphors and stuff. Bag like that, of that sunshine. Are... Yeah. Like, <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely really enjoy writing like bubbly, um, happy music, but I definitely want to try writing some darker stuff. But I no. think that I like writing a song and listening back to it and then feeling happy because of my own song. So I think that eventually leads to me writing happy songs because I'm like, I want to feel happy when I'm listening to my own music because, you know, like when I make music, a lot of the times I'm going through something hard. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, damn, if I make a depressing ass song, it's just going to make me more depressed. Like keep listening back to it and remembering that like all the hard time. And yeah. so like, why don't I just fucking fake it till I make it? and write a happy ass song while I'm like crying inside, you know? Like, I'm just gonna make a happy, happy song and just listen to it and be my own therapy, you know, if that makes That's sense. That's good. Like, That's good. I have a few like yeah. really sad songs that I wrote that I don't want to hear anymore, you know? Like, I yeah, don't like exactly. listening to them. I'm like, screw that I song. I do too. I have a lot of sad songs where I'm like, I actually never want to make this into a real song. <laughs> <laughs> and so I send this song to you. I send you like the link to it and you have the song like you said earlier like are you writing this bridge mostly like in the shower or on the road like where is the word? yeah the uh shine got written in the car while i was like driving to work or something <laughs> that's so interesting <laughs> um i think away with me was also written in the car yeah where where like i'm realizing how like crucial how vital like commuting is to you <laughs> like as far as art goes like if you live next door to your job like where are you writing the music and it's like, I, I get Man, that. Man, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I also, another, I like produced for the very first time. My, oh, it, nice. there's a, there's one song that I've ever made and it's like a little house beat. I might have showed it to you actually when I came over. I was stuck at Chicago airport on a layover for like eight hours. I was literally stuck at the airport for eight hours. So I opened up GarageBand um, and I was like, man. So house music seems easy enough, right? It's like <laughs> that's what Drake said. I guess. Maybe we can. I don't know. Hi hats on every offbeat. I I don't know. Like, yeah. So um, I I made a little house beat and then I recorded myself like singing or speaking lyrics like while on the plane, like boarding the plane or like sitting in the turn of the terminal and stuff so like i definitely think my creativity and inspiration like i i cannot write like that when i'm in just like i definitely do not write as well when i'm at a studio or like if i'm sitting in like a writing session it sucks because like a lot of a, a lot of times like the easiest way to bang out a song is to just get into the studio you know and write it there and record it there but like yeah my brain gets stuck I, I don't work that way and it's it's yeah. it's caused me a lot of anguish in life because I don't work that way I I write best when I'm having fun and it's hard yeah. for me to schedule fun like it's hard for me to go like okay from three to six I will be having fun like it's really yeah. hard for me. And so studios kind of kill my creativity it's as stupid yeah as that for is. sure for sure it's funny that you say that, that that happened at the Chicago airport just because like anybody in this country who hasn't flown a lot the Chicago airport is like because it's in the middle of the country it's like the layover capital it's like yeah. everybody going from east to west coast has to spend like 45 minutes hours. to like three hours there and so like so much stuff ends up getting done in the O'Hare airport yeah. but that's like funny that you made a house track there <laughs> I did, I did. And I do want to tell uh, anybody watching this also that's heard the song a few times, there are, like, it wasn't even just specifically the lyrics. Like, you wanted to tag, like, the, the hey, hi, hello, 
with your voice I, that's in like in my verse like there are a lot yeah. of like specific like those are producer decisions like vocal producer yeah kind of, yeah a lot of people looking at it, it's like the word producer is like whatever like uh, no one knows what it means anymore but in the studio there are specific jobs and like when somebody's like oh this person did vocals on a track the, all mm. that really implies is they showed up and they, they did vocals on, on it. the track yeah. yeah but it's like you're showing up and you're doing vocals on a track you're also writing you know i didn't write any of your lyrics you're also making specific producer decisions on like here's how i want my vocals to sound or here's where i think my vocals could contribute and it's like i am listening like as a co-producer i'm listening to those decisions and putting the vocals there and as i hear the track back now i'm aware of two things i'm aware of one i would have never done it you know it wasn't something that i was going to suggest and two it does make the track sound better it enhances like specific parts of the track and so it is um it is nice and i and i want to make that that apparent to anybody watching this that there are also some decisions being made by you and the track that aren't necessarily apparent on like a yeah list. i would like love to call myself a vocal producer but i just don't know if i have the experience enough yet to like to my own horn and call myself that <laughs> so. i think you can i don't know you've produced <laughs> vocals that what else would you need to be a vocal <laughs> producer <laughs> Yeah, no, it definitely. <laughs> yeah. And like also I want to say the there's a every voice is different and every produ production style is different. And for you your vo your vocals have always been really solid. And I know it's kind of like a vague term. So like to elaborate a little bit. When I say solid, I mean like you can take your vocals off of a track and very easily place them in another track without it feeling weird as a producer mm. who re remixes a lot you know i do a lot of remixing and you can take a like a you know a drake vocal off of a, tr a song or you could take a katy perry vocal off a song and you can remix it and it'll sound good not even necessarily because the producer that's remixing it is so strong and prolific a lot of that has to do with the strength of the vocal itself like the su mm. substance of the vocal mm. and so mm -hmm. when i'm remixing um the song that you have with uh tom ggg your vocals are strong enough that I could do anything under them. I could like make like a boss <laughs> of a track under it. I can make like an orchestral thing and it's like, okay, this is strong. They stand on their own two legs without, you know, some instrumental underneath them. And so that means for, so much. <laughs> yeah, it's and, and, it, and it means a lot as an artist, it means a lot because it's like less work that I have to do. I don't have to like, <laughs> to, like fill an extra space. And so yeah. for this track, when, when, and I'll play it while well, like I'll edit it into this video and I'll play it, but like, when you came over to record the vocals you recorded to one very specific really repetitive thing all of the like flourishes and the flutes and all that stuff that end up going around your voice and the final product were not there in the, mm -hmm. in the original recording mm -hmm. and that isn't something that i can do with every vocalist you know i can't have a, mm -hmm. a typical vocalist come in and record something and know that I can take away all that they just recorded to and build around it and have it still be yeah. good without having them come back and like re-record over it to fit the new thing I did. And that's- But that's also another reason why I love house vocals because house vocals are that yeah. exact, like epitome <laughs> of that. Like they you are. can take those vocals and like put it over anything and it's gonna slap, like it's gonna go crazy. And They're I'm powerful. like- yeah, I want that. I, I want to be that. So that means <laughs> so much to me. Yeah, no, it was really cool. It, it was it was really cool working with you, having that experience and being able to see because, again, known you for many years, seen your like collaborations with Sean, heard your voice on other tracks, uh, mm -hmm. saw um, Away With Me, listened to that, even remixed that. But I never got to actually create alongside you. And so I think that that was really enlightening seeing your approach to things even yeah. physically right because a lot of the collaborations on this album were like email collaborations mm -hmm. but you like physically came over and recorded directly onto mm -hmm. the track like there wasn't any like sending of files i was I, like man omni i just have this cheap sony mic i gotta come <laughs> over <laughs> no and it's cool and, it, and i'm and i'm i'm grateful that we live close enough to where that was even an option that you yeah. could just come over and record it and and chill for a while and i definitely understand the first time that we'd seen each other since I think like the pandemic no like since the show some other time oh, but yeah. like actually sitting down and true, like catching true. up it's been a couple years it was really nice to reunite and for that reunion to be you know for a creative thing for sure 
I was just really excited to finally be doing something with you. Your instrumentals are always so fun and they're so Omni Boy. I don't know how to explain it, but like I, I hear <laughs> one of your songs and I'm like, that, that's an Omni song, like right there. That's Sometimes cool. I'll even listen to like a bossa nova track and I'm like, they want to be Omni, omni so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, as I was making this, I was just like, man, thank goodness for Brazil. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to make this track if like not for all of the bossa nova music yeah. I listened to. It was so cool. But yeah, thank thank you for uh, for helping me with the song. It's definitely better for all of your your contributions. And thanks for being like an artist just out there and doing your own thing. Oh gosh, thank you for yeah doing all this i mean i'm like i'm so i'm so so glad that i got the opportunity yeah yeah and we're definitely probably gonna make some more music together in the future so <laughs> yeah for sure and i feel like every time we do we'll get better at making music specifically mm -hmm. with each other because like we yeah. know our like strengths and like where we shine and it's fun every time it's fun every time so yeah for sure